Toby asks, how do Blockstream's Bitcoin satellites work, and what are their potential use cases? Blockstream runs five satellites orbiting the Earth and sending blockchain data to almost any spot on our planet's surface. Can you explain how this works in detail? Are the satellites real full nodes, or do they just relay data from Earth? If they are full nodes, how do they update them? What is needed to feed my full nodes with their satellite data? What data are they broadcasting? Is it only the most recent, or could I do an initial block download with it? Finally, where do you think will they be adopted in the future, and what potential has the API they want to make available next January? Sorry for the amount of questions, but I hope you can elaborate a bit on this really interesting topic. This topic is, is fascinating, but um, I think there is a lot of misunderstanding and misinformation. And, and part of that is the term Bitcoin satellites or Blockstream's Bitcoin satellites. So, what you imagine here is a super secret project by a um, hidden trillionaire um, mega evil person with lots of minions who built rockets in order to launch into space uh, special satellites that on the outside say Blockstream. And, uh, within those satellites, there are little jars of cloned matter from the DNA retrieved from Satoshi Nakamoto during the early stages of Bitcoin. Using this cloned data, Blockstream grows uh, miniature Satoshi Nakamotos in space, who rewrite the software in orbit in order to ensure its validity. All right. Um, that's not what's happening. Also, they're not Bitcoin satellites. Also, Blockstream didn't launch satellites. Also, they're not full nodes. We kind of got on a way for it. So let's take this back down to Earth because that's where all of it happens. The Blockstream satellite project. <coughs> pardon me. The Blockstream satellite project is basically um, the leasing of uh, bandwidth. Uh, broadcast bandwidth on specific frequencies from commercial communication satellites that lease frequencies to providers, whereby Blockstream can use these leased frequencies to uh, transmit to these satellites a signal from ground stations that is then repeated. This signal is an encoded signal that contains blocks and transactions broadcast from the ground that are then bounced off satellites and transmitted to Earth. In order to use this, what you need to use is a, a relatively easy to find commercial TV satellite dish in the areas where they have coverage. A regular dish. I've seen people use their direct TV satellite TV dish and repurposing it. Um, you'll need to change the transceiver at the end of the, the dish. Um, that's the little piece of electronics that's sitting in the uh, focal point of the parabolic dish um, that actually receives the signal from the satellite. And, um, so those are relatively inexpensive. You connect that via coaxial cable to a special device um, that, that is basically a software radio. It's a software-based broadband uh, radio receiver that can take the entire coaxial signal and all of the frequencies that are being fed in, and using software um, can extract from that the encoded data that Blockstream is transmitting from ground stations. So, uh, specifically, what this is is leasing. Uh, on commercial satellites. There are no full nodes in space. That's not what's happened. Somebody did actually suggest doing that, uh, a project led by Jeff Garzik, one of the earlier core developers. That project failed, unfortunately. It would have been interesting, but that's not what's happening here. Um, if you want to do this, you can buy the equipment. For about $150, you can buy the software-defined radio and the, the transceiver, and repurpose a satellite dish, or buy a cheap one or a second-hand one. And you can do that. It's a lot easier to do in a stationary environment, where you can carefully calibrate and point the dish in the right direction. I've seen people try to do it on vans and, uh, and uh, mobile units, but unless you spend two or three thousand dollars for a servo motorized satellite tracking system 
that that follows the satellite as you move, you, you're going to have to spend 20 or 30 minutes recalibrating and pointing the antenna in the right direction. It's not easy. Uh, if you've ever done satellite TV, you know what that's all about. Um, what is this useful for? It's useful for receiving uh, Bitcoin information and keeping a node synced and validating transactions in an environment where you are under heavy governmental censorship or uh, where there is significant risk to anyone being able to see that that's the kind of traffic you're exchanging with the rest of the world. So imagine an environment where you're in a war zone, you're in a refugee center, you're in a um, in, in an area that is under civil war or something like that. You know, disguising a satellite dish is fairly easy. Um, you, you, can, you can put it in, a, in such a location that is not visible from anywhere, not even from the, the sky. You can camouflage the fact that it is a, a dish, and you can receive this information. Um, and so that makes it a very powerful tool because it increases censorship resistance. At the same time, transmitting the signal out to the satellite can be done from any number of commercial ground uh, stations, or including possibly um, setting up a giant private dish to point towards the satellite um, to do the uplink from other locations. These can be leased in, in different countries, so you've got quite a bit of resilience there. Uh, you can't do an initial block download with it. You can only get updated blocks and transactions, but it's still extremely useful. And if you want to ensure that what you're receiving is real, other than the proof of work that obviously um, can't be forged, but um, if you want to cross-check it against something else, then you'd have to set up an alternative mechanism uh, and compare the two. So what you could do, for example, is download a much smaller amount of data off a modem or VPN or using some other communications medium in order to cross-check with another node that the blocks you're receiving. Um, for example, you could download just block headers off a modem and then download the full blocks um, with all of the transactions off the satellite. That can be very useful in an environment where you have very limited uh, bandwidth. So, I really, really wish that this was um, a series of giant geostationary orbits, block stream satellites that inside had rows of jars with cloned DNA tissue of Satoshi Nakamoto and mini baby Satoshis that have been raised by robots to recode the Bitcoin Core software in space with their tiny little cute keyboards uh, while being fed. Uh, from algae grown under UV light, but that's not exactly how it works. Mm -hmm.